Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be making some tags and I'm challenging myself to use things that are not kind of, you know, pre-bought, store-bought, as in craft store purchased items. I have a lot of pre-made tags, but instead today I've cut apart a manila folder just into oblong shapes and I'm going to be using those. I've also got an old harmonica book with some music paper in it. My husband was getting rid of it because he doesn't play harmonica anymore. Not that he ever did, but he thought he'd try at one point and it never worked out. Some pages from a botanical book, a bit of old fabric and some lace. And also some tea bags. Forgot about this. Got some tea bags and some paper just from a book that I've put some ink on. And these are envelopes that I have dyed with tea and they didn't really work. They crinkled because of the plastic in here. But rather than throw them away, I thought I'd try and repurpose them into these tags. I have an idea in my head, but whether it'll work out or not is another thing. And I've got quite a few because I wanted to bulk make them. I'm quite uh, enjoying this, this bulk making thing I've been doing lately. So my first step with all of this would be to cut them. So I'm just going to make a tag out of them and just put them through my trimmer and did the initial cut down of them and I wasn't really worried so much about what size they were I just wanted to make sure I used all of the file folder so all of these came from one file folder so I just thought we'd um, we'd get on and work out what I'm going to do now I'll just um, cut the rest of those as I go through later so we'll start with this one and I'm looking at what I can actually put down on the surface. So I thought maybe I'll do some layering. Start with some music paper. And whether I'll cover it all or not, I'm not sure. Let's see. Maybe I'll take a piece of the center like this one here. I'm just going to rip this bit off the top because I quite like using these bits that have words and other things on them in my collaging. So I just might use some of that later. Let's put this on here. I could probably get a couple on here actually. Now I am going to sew them so I'm not worrying too much about using my glue that sticks things really well. I'm just going to use a glue stick and put some temporary adhesive on there really and I think while I'm here I might see I can get two on the one side after I put them through the machine I'll sew everything on then in fact why not see if I can do a couple more I think I'll get one more down there and if I do a little one I may well get four should have put those up a bit higher maybe let's see I've got a tiny one here I should have a tiny one Yep, that's just going to fit. Just trim these into a tag shape. Now you can measure your tag shapes, but usually I get the left hand one wrong always. I don't know why. It's probably because I'm right handed. That's better. I'm just randomly cutting them into a general tag shape though. I think that'll be fine. Let's get this down. And now I'll tear them off. Now I need to look at what else can go on here. So maybe I can use a piece of this old envelope. The tea dye on it's lovely, it's just the, the envelope's not usable as an envelope anymore. But I thought if I use, you know, bits of it, I could try and um, reuse some of it before I throw it in the bin. Quite like this little piece and I think maybe a tea bag. I really was um, just when I was dyeing this paper I thought well I'll try and rescue the tea bag. Actually it was pretty easy you just open these are twinings tea bags so you just open them they've got a staple in them open them with you know remove sort of where the staple is just pull that off and the tea then just falls out so it was actually pretty easy to do. I don't know if the tea bags will tear oh they will too. I should have done that when I pulled it apart. I like the tearing look much better than the sewing um, cut look with the scissors. 
I'm just trying to get a balance of the pieces and the shapes to see whether or not I like it. Yeah, I'm not, I don't really like this piece here. Like I said, some of the images in this book are not that nice. But if I cut that bit off, which is a pity, but I can always use the back of that piece because there is you know, blank space and writing on there. So I could actually make something with that. Sometimes when you're collaging, it's hard to actually get something that you like. And I'm struggling with that today, I can tell. I don't know why, some days it just comes together, but not today for some reason. I think it's that. Let's take that off and put this down. That's definitely much better than what it was. But I still want something else over the top of it. So I think I will go to this. I'm struggling with my collaging today. I don't know why. Some days it'll work. Well, most days I, I don't have any problem with collaging. But today it's not working. Maybe it's because I haven't got that many products in front of me. But I think I'll start sticking things down and just seeing if I like them. Start with the tea bag and then this piece here. I'm sure it'll look better once I've stitched around it. That's going to lift it somewhat. I've got a bit of the back of that book page because I didn't like the image on the front. And then put this down. Maybe a bit of fabric. Where's my fabric? I don't know whether it just needs something. Just, I really like the selvage here where they put the branding on material. It's really lovely to use. I will cut that off. You get these really cool words and you know sometimes you see the ones that have got the little dots of colour showing what's in each thing which is really nice. And then maybe I'll put that on here. Yeah, that's better. I think that was the problem. I just needed something else and I wasn't sure what. But I think I found my answer now. Let's put this down here. And then up the top, I will cut this into a little tag thing to go at the top. Probably don't need that much actually, half of that would be fine. Put that in there like that, that will be even better. Okay, so that's the first one, and I will go away and sew that in a moment, but I just wanted to try and do a couple. I might pull this leaf out a little bit, it's a bit hidden in there. Hmm. Oh no, I think that's fine. I'll leave it like that. All right, so I'll put that to one side and I'll work on another one now. Let's do this one. So I decided to make these today because I know that a lot of people don't have access to the supplies that I have access to. I'm in a position where if I want something I can, you know, buy it from the craft shop which is good but I know that a lot of people don't so I thought I'd try and do something using some more basic supplies so like the music paper you can pick that up in op shops quite cheaply and if it's not cheap in your op shop then I would go to a different one because the prices do vary from op shop to op shop and some places they do charge quite a bit for things like this. The tea bags of course you can just if you drink tea like I do, copious amounts of tea that I drink, it's quite easy just to rip them and you know take the tea out of them, just shake that into a into the bin and use the actual cover of the tea bag. These are English breakfast and extra strength tea bags, and you can see how red they are. They're really quite you know dark reddish tint, and that's because when you make the tea, it is also very red. When you make the, it's called extra strong, so it's you know super strong. I actually bought them by accident, but I drank them all anyway. 
because it was quite nice but I don't normally buy the extra strong I do like my tea strong though and I'm not a coffee drinker so there you go I don't know what you people drink but I don't drink coffee but I drink copious amounts of tea I probably have oh five five or six cups of tea a day which is probably too many when I think about it not good to have that many I'm sure but I like it so I drink it so I thought if I put another tea bag down there and then I've got another piece of that um, off cut here but it's not popping because it's sort of hidden on the music paper so we will try and put something else on it Let's see if I've got a better image on here I have cut this rather large image out from the book but I think that that'll look quite good down there so that's where it's going to go I'm not going to muck around I've got a lot to do although I'm doing you know what I call making the things in bulk I am actually going to make them individually I guess it's just having that many on the table it forces me to keep on working until I get them all done <laughs> which is you know not a bad thing I'll pop a little bit of book page under there as well yeah, that's going to be fine maybe I'll put it up here and I've got some other lace I used that little florally lace last time I've got this white lace which I want to put across here or somewhere Maybe I'll put the lace underneath down here. So that's not looking much at the moment, but when I get it on, I think it will look fine. And then I will put another piece of this on as well. The little, little edge thing that I've cut off the fabric. So that's the next one. And once I've sewn it, I'll cut these edges of this off. In fact, I could probably just chip that now. I can see through there. It's going to look a lot better once I do that. This has still got the string on the tea bag. I like that. I think I'm going to use that with the string on it and just tear it wherever it wants to tear. Leave that bit of string on there as well. I'm wondering if this time I might put a piece of this fabric down actually on the piece. This is beautiful fabric from Sweetwater and Sweetwater all also um, do, I'm not sure if they do anymore but when I had the scrapbooking shop they also do paper and uh, when I found that they did fabric I was looking one day and went oh Sweetwater, Sweetwater fabric how wonderful. I bought this for my quilt so I've got a quilt made with that's just one of the pieces but all of the sweet water stuff that came from the quilt and I love it it's a very pretty quilt I like all my quilts I haven't done much quilting this year I must say it's been a bit been a bit dry on the old quilt front but I think that I will get back into it. I'd hope to do it through winter. And I think, you know, didn't do that much last year either, but because I was so sick for so long, it's, um, you know, it was a bit difficult to do any quilting. Actually, it was a bit difficult to do anything at all. So I think, um, I think I definitely need to get back into my quilting just at the moment I'm really into doing my journaling and also other hobbies I've got too many hobbies I have dropped some of my hobbies actually I don't know be interested to know what sort of hobbies you guys have other than watching YouTube and uh, crafting I don't think all that's going to fit on there either Maybe I can just do a little bit. That green doesn't look any good at all on there, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to keep that for the other one and I'll cut this purple 
because I know that this purple will look great with that green. So I've got a little um, violet, maybe it's a little violet or a snapdragon or something here. My children are moving house today. They've bought a new house and they're moving in and I tell you, instead of helping them, I'm crafting so it's all good. I guess they're adults, they don't really need help doing things like that anymore but I did offer to help and I thought what are you thinking? Why are you offering to help when you've got craft to do? <laughs> no, that's not true. I would have helped them if they'd come and asked me. But so far no phone calls so that's great. All right, so I've got this instead. I'll leave that little bit of paper there and I've got a violet and the green that green I've got on there will look really pretty with this purple and it does look at that and I think I still want a bit more of the back of that book page which I did tear some off here I have that much fabric I'm thinking maybe I need to bundle them up and you know put them on marketplace or something because I've just got so much of these little scraps and I think that um, they may sell if I've got little scraps, you know, like this sort of size, if I put like bundles of those together. This is beautiful motor fabric. I love motor fabric to quilt with because they, the, um, it's a very, um, the weave and the, the way that they do it is really quality. You know, the number of threads and things that they use, it's a really quality fabric. So it just feels beautiful. Not like your sort of fabrics you get from Spotlight and stuff like that. I get this, well, out of the US or there is a place in Brisbane that I go. It's a bit far away from me now. I used to live around the corner from it and then I moved. So I do, um, when I went to the US, I got a lot. And of course, the UK as well, when I travelled last year, I still got some quilt fabric that I bought in, um, in, um, Amsterdam it's the word in fact I bought a couple of lots of fabric in Amsterdam and then I bought a whole lot in another town as well so certainly got plenty of quilt fabric and other fabrics it's just a matter of thinking about using them and how I'm going to use them so I'm going to have to get on to that you know what I didn't do on this one I didn't put any lace I think I will put a little bit of lace across this one Just a little piece like across the bottom here. thought it was missing something when I put it to one side. I like a bit of lace. Just put some across there. I've sewn these together now and I think I just need a couple little bits on them. So I'm going to add a bit of lace here. And this one I didn't put any lace on. So I'm definitely going to add some lace across here on this one and then that will be done. But the other two, I think that they look quite cute. So there's not many supplies used in this and I've got a whole bunch there that I can keep making. But I think that that's quite a good outcome with limited supplies to make something. 